What's up, divas? And what's up, divos? It's your girl, April. And today, of course, it is Real Talk Wednesdays. So, for today's drink, before I even get into Real Talk Wednesday, I've got a plastic cup with something new that I tried. First of all, I want to show you guys on camera. Hopefully, you can see it. Um, it's kind of like, see how it's shimmering? It's got like this gray liquor in it, so it's like kind of like galactic, if you can see it. You see how it's doing that? Awesome, right? So this is something that I found at actually Sam's Club. And I'm going to just wait for the camera to autofocus. Well, I, can't, I don't have it on autofocus, but... Okay, so this is something that I picked up at Sam's Club for the Super Bowl, but it was for me. Um, it's called Vanique, and it is the original Vanique Shimmery Liqueur, liquor, a fusion of premium vodka, mos Moscato, and natural fruit flavors, 20% alcohol. Let me tell you something, ladies. Vanique, V-I-N-I-Q. I, the thing that attracted me to this was the actual shimmering that's going on. This, like, really, like, attracted me. But I will tell you this. You only need one of these, and you'll be mellowed out and nice and just relaxed so yes if you guys ever see that there is a ruby one but this is the original one if you see it pick it up it tastes really really good and i love moscato so and i like vodka too so yes delish delish i have it in a plastic cup for today so anyway besides that this is some old hair this is the hair by best lace wigs that i made into the unit i have been wearing this religiously especially because it has gotten to be super hot out here it is still February, and it was 86 degrees outside today. Like, what the heck is going on? Like, seriously, too damn hot for me. I had to change my clothes and put on some shorts and a sleeveless shirt for $2.99 from Old Navy. So, yes, you guys, super hot, super hot. So, I like to wear my hair kind of like braided back like this when it's really, really hot. And plus, I had like a long day from grocery shopping to an appointment to a new refrigerator, like, I had a lot going on today, so I am, like, beat, okay? So, if you guys want a real talk about your life situation, you can always send me an email to muffinismylovers2012 at gmail.com and make sure to put in the subject line, real talk, and just send me an email, and I will get into it. If you want to change the name of your characters in the email, please go ahead and do so and let me know so that way I don't go ahead and make up some names. But, yes, you can always send me a real talk. And if you want a wig made, you can always hit me up at goingwiththewindwigs.webly.com or you can send me an email to muffinismylovers2012 at gmail.com as well. So, on to that note, let's get on to this real talk. I'm going to try to do three today, and one of them is pretty long, so let's get into this. Alrighty, I already changed the names in my story. My name is Shay, and I was in a relationship with this guy named Deshaun. We was together for a year and two months. Everything was good till people started to tell him things about me that wasn't true. And he believed everything that they were saying. Long story short, he cheated and got me and another girl pregnant. I had an abortion, but I am now pregnant again. We are no longer together, but we still mess around. He says he loves me and wants to make us work, but I just don't believe it. What should I do? I really need your help. Shay. Hmm. Well, first of all, before we even start, I didn't even beat my face today because I had to leave so early. So, But yes. So Shay is in a predicament where she is pregnant again. She's already had an abortion to Deshaun, but she had an abortion. Deshaun is one of those people who believe everything that someone tells him, regardless of what it is. He's just a believer of it. There's probably no true facts, but he's just going to believe it. So long story short, she got an abortion um, because Deshaun basically got her and another chick pregnant at the same time. Then she ended up getting pregnant again. They're not together, but they mess around. And Deshaun claims that he loves her, that he wants to make it work, yada, yada, yada. She doesn't believe him, and what should she do? Well, there goes the proof in the pudding, sweetheart. If you don't believe him, then you need to go with your gut instinct. 
it's one thing to be in a relationship and you got this insecure person because it sounds like he's very insecure. If he's going off of what everyone is saying to him about you, what you do, what you've done or what you haven't done or whether it's true or not, what he needs to do is stop bringing other people into your relationship. However, if he's believing everything that people say, then he's not, re he's not ready for a committed relationship. And he may have feelings for you. However, I don't really think he truly loves you because if he really had true strong feelings for you, which would result to love, then he wouldn't go off believing everything that other people said. Also, he wouldn't have got no next bitch pregnant neither. So, here's my thing. What is Deshaun doing about the young lady who's pregnant to him as well? Is he telling her the same bullshit stories? I love you. I want to make this work between us. We got a baby on the way. We got a kid together. Whatever the case may be. Is he still telling her the same thing? Because I'm pretty sure he has somewhat of a feeling or somewhat type of feelings for this other young lady. Because, for one, he stuck his dick in her raw and didn't wear protection. And for two... You got her pregnant. Now, here's the thing. You may not need to have strong feelings to get someone pregnant and to have sex with them without a condom. That's just poor judgment for one. And who's to say that Deshaun ain't out there fucking other bitches? So, you and him still mess around. I'm pretty sure the one that's pregnant with him, pregnant to him, or maybe she had the baby already. I'm pretty sure that they mess around as well. Because if not... I'm pretty sure he goes over there and sees his baby if the baby is born already. Or just keeps in contact with her because she's pregnant by him. Now, you two probably ain't the only two that are pregnant, or you two ain't the only two that he's messing around with. However, you don't know, and neither does Broomhilda know. She don't know neither. So she's stuck in a cloud, and as well as you, Shay, is stuck in a cloud. Here's my thing, and my, just, this is my true feelings, my opinion, I would leave him the fuck alone. Now, first of all, you're going around, you're fucking this one and that one, not wearing no condom. Did he forget that there's still HIV out there? There are other things besides HIV, like herpes, um, chlamydia, gonorrhea, syphilis. You know what I'm saying? There are enough sexually transmitted diseases out there that should make you want to wear a condom. If you want to go around and sleep around on person, then that's your business. That's one thing. However, let's just do this the adult way. Take the adult route, the adult version, and put a rubber on it, okay? Stop going around getting all these girls pregnant. I'm pretty sure there's a lot of shit that you don't know about him. And it's funny to me how he's going off of what other people say about you. But have you come back and forth to him about things that you've heard about him? You may not even heard anything. And that may be his way of covering up his shit and protecting it by saying certain things about you. Niggas or men get really self-conscious when they're doing dirt. They like to kind of put the blame on you or point out things that you've done or haven't done or have heard about you. Because they want to cover their shit up and make it look right. And that's not just niggas or men. It's women, bitches. It's, it's the both, okay? The both of the groups. Female, male, they all do it. So it seems like to me he's trying to cover up his insecurities and the shit that he's done and kind of come at you about shit he's heard about you. If he doesn't have proof, then it's really not his concern. If it's before him, then it's somewhat not his concern. If you ain't going around fucking Tom, Dick, and Harry without condoms, and you ain't giving him nothing, and this is your past, then it's really not his concern. And sometimes you need to keep people out your business. Like, seriously, there are friends and there are foes. And it seems like there's a lot of foes in the fucking world who like to tell your business and spread your business. And no one ever wants to see anyone else happy. If you're not happy, then they don't want to see the other person happy. What's the old saying? Misery loves company. So, on that note, Shay, I really think that you need to go ahead, raise your baby, get you some child support, make sure that he takes care of his child, and leave him the fuck alone. Because as long as you continue on to allow him to keep messing around on you, he is going to feed you shit. And it seems like, to me, he's giving you a nice, big, heaping spoonful of bullshit, okay? When I say bullshit, talking about, oh, I love you, I want to make it work... Who hasn't fucking ever heard that? I've heard that enough times in my lifetime. And I'm 41 years old. And I've heard it more than enough. Okay? More than enough. I've heard it from my ex-husband. He said that on numerous occasions. Whatever. And I've heard it from others. It's always I want to make it work. Even those job turkeys, okay, and that's the old one, job turkeys, who just trying to get with you, they even say some bullshit. That's their game. That's the game that they spit out of their mouth. And you need to realize game versus 
real shit. Bullshit versus real shit. What he's telling you is some real bullshit. I love you. I want to make it work. What are you telling the next bitch over there that's pregnant or done had your baby? Or what are you telling your other girlfriends? Because I'm pretty sure that Deshaun has more than just you that he messes around with. His pregnant girlfriend and somebody else. So honey, child, take your child and move on your merry way. And tell that nigga to peace out. Peace out, deuces, okay? Seriously. Because you ain't going to do nothing but keep going back and forth, back and forth. And then in the long run, it's probably going to be some bullshit that you really, really, really cannot handle. Like somebody else is pregnant by him or such and such. What was the bullshit he was telling you why he was fucking you and got you pregnant the first time while he got this other girl pregnant? You know what I'm saying? Here's my thing. I would have never fucked with him again if he got somebody else pregnant. However, if you horny, I can understand. Everybody got an itch and need to be scratched. I would not have fucked him without a condom. On some real shit, dirty dick motherfuckers like that need to stay in a lane. Those are the type that you really don't want to go raw with. You don't want to fuck them without any type of protection. And the protection for that is lock your door and don't let that nigga come in on the other side. That's just my goal and my statement. So, Shay... My opinion, leave him the hell alone and go about your business. You don't need him to raise your child. It is nice to have a mother and a father relationship and the child is being raised by both parents in one nice happy home. But it doesn't work that way always in the real world. So sometimes, sometimes we got to suck it up, get on our grown woman shit, our grown man shit, stand on our own two feet and carry on about our business. I've done it. Enough times where I had to carry on about my business. So I'm pretty sure that you can too. There are always ins and outs. There's always alternatives of getting help. If you can't seek child support for him, then there's the courts. But I would not deal with him on no other bullshit. He's trying to use your pregnancy as a scapegoat to get back with you. And to continuously do the shit he's done. As long as you allow him, he's going to continue. So my thing to you on that note is to leave him the hell alone. So give Shay your opinion on your advice. What would you do if you had the next nigga, the dirty dick dude, the dirty dick dude, fucking you and some other bitch and got her pregnant at the same time? Now he's telling you some bullshit. What would you guys do? I'm just saying. I'm just saying. So this one is going to be a long one, and I'm going to do my best to get through it. Um, It's a long one, and the next one after that is long. Oh, my allergies. Hi, April. I have been watching your channel for years and love your videos. Sorry this may be kind of long, but I want to give a full picture of my situation. I am writing because I have a dilemma. You can call me Michelle. Here's a little background info. I moved out of state for undergrad for four years and then came back to my hometown to attend grad school for three years and lived at home during that time. I am now 26 years old and I graduated in May of 2015 with my, master's, with my master's degree and was fortunate to get a job in my field of study not long after graduation. I have been dating a great guy for a little over two years now. Here's the situation. My boyfriend and I have been discussing moving in together since last year and we are thinking about April as a move-in date as his lease will be up at that time. However, I have not yet told my parents about our plans. My parents are really overprotective. I am an only child and ever since I can remember, I have often missed out on experiences my parents would not allow me to participate, especially as it relates to social events when my friends and I were growing up together. I distinctly remember there being multiple times that I didn't even ask to go to a friend's party or event because I knew my parents would say no. Fast forward to now. I am now an adult and they are still super protective. For example, due to our work schedules, my boyfriend and I only see each other over each other on the weekends. My mom will text me a question mark, which is basically her way of asking where I am at around 10.30 p.m. on weekends on weekend days while I am at my boyfriend's house and this is my cue to leave and go home because she she won't go to bed until I get home. 10.30 p.m. I'm fed up with it. I've lived away from home for four years in college as well as studied abroad in Spain for a semester during that time and kept myself safe and used good judgment in taking care of myself. Even during school breaks while I was in college, I was happy to come home to see my family. But after a couple of days, I was ready to go back to school because I enjoyed my independence. It's just really frustrating to be treated as if you are a child and you have a curfew when, as I mentioned before, I have a graduate degree, full-time job, and I'm 26 years old. I've wanted to move out of my parents' house since I graduated from undergrad. There are some complications to the matter, though. My parents are older, and since the end of my freshman year in college, my dad has been in poor health. My mom and, and I have to help take care of him due to him having chronic health conditions and memory problems. 
I know that it is hard on my mom because she is not the most patient person. So I know taking care of him has been a challenge for her these last few years. I know that this will be a main argument of hers for me not moving out. Her needing help taking care of him. Though I will be moving locally and therefore I will be still around to help. Also, I work in social service field, counseling, and do not make a lot of money. Unfortunately, I have a, quite a lot of student loan debts from my undergraduate degree. Six figures worth of debt. My loans went into repayment in November, and currently my mom is helping me to pay them because there's no way I can pay them on the salary that I make. So it's all a very messy situation. She helps me out financially, which I appreciate, but I resent at the same time because I feel like that's hanging over my head, and I want to be totally financially independent. I just feel like at this age, it's time for me to move on with my life, but I know my parents will have an issue with it because of their protective nature. I feel as though I am trapped and am almost 100% certain that my mom and my dad, for that matter, will not react well to it. She is the kind of person that has to be convinced by friends or co-workers, etc., in order to allow me to do things that they allow their kids to do because she doesn't want to appear like the overprotective parent to them. But she won't let me do something if I ask her myself. She's also kind of traditional, so I'm sure she'll have an issue with me moving in with my boyfriend and we're not married, though we are seriously considering getting married. I don't have all the money saved that I would like at this point, and I'm scared that my mom will flip and say that I will have to carry all my expenses if I move out, which would be difficult for me. I'm currently looking for other jobs that pay more so that I can have more financial peace of mind and try to sell items on the internet to make extra money, but the clock is ticking. I'm also trying to refinance my loans so the monthly payments won't be so much. I would be able to pay them myself then. I feel stressed out all of the time because of my job, financial situation, and now the prospect of telling my parents I'm moving out. How should I tell them that I'm moving out? What should I do in this situation? I would appreciate any advice. Thanks. So that was long. And Michelle is 26 years old. She's graduated. She has her master's degree. She's, she's doing big things. She's doing really, really well. Of course, she lives back at home. She's got a job as a counselor in the social services field. And she has a great guy who she's been with a year and two months, and they want to move in together up to um, April 2016 because that's when her boyfriend's lease will be up. However, she is an only child, and her parents are very protective of, over her. She is 26 years old. Her father's in poor health, so she does help out, and she's not really financially stable. So her mom has been helping her with her school loans. Now, here's the thing. She's kind of scared to tell her parents that she knows that it's not going to go well. However... She has an issue with them just being overprotective, overbearing, and just old school traditional as to where they're probably going to say something because her and her boyfriend are not married to one another, but they want to move in. What should she do? Hmm. So good. First of all, here's the thing, Michelle. Now, I can totally understand that you and your boyfriend are spending time together over the weekend and your mom is sending you text messages like, um, question mark, where are you? It's 1030 at night. She's not going to go to sleep until you get home. I can totally understand her issues somewhat. However, you are 26. But here's the kicker. It's always two-sided. You live in her household, so kind of there is a curfew because even though you're 26 years old, you cannot go in and out of somebody else's house as you would your own. You know what I'm saying? There are boundaries and there is a respect thing. You know what I'm saying? It's all about respect. They don't really want you coming in at 4 in the morning, 2 in the morning, you know what I'm saying, in and out their house as you would do your own home. That's the type of people they are. They're older people. They're set in their ways. And sometimes you just got to bear with it and respect the other person's home. Now... I get it. You're 26 years old. Round it off, you're damn near 30, okay? You want to be independent. You want to be a grown-up. You want to go out and hang out with your boyfriend and stay with him or hang out with him. Yada, 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 etc., etc. Have you ever tried to just approach your mother and let her know, like, hey, you know, you don't have to say hey, but hey, mom, you know, I understand the rules and regulations of your household. However, I am 26 years old, and I would really appreciate it if you wouldn't give me a curfew. I would never disrespect your home, but I do like to spend time with my boyfriend, being that we don't get to see one another as much. And maybe there are times when I would like to stay over his home or his house on the weekend, but I would just really appreciate it if you wouldn't give me such an early curfew, being that I am 26 years old, but I do respect your home. That's the one thing you need to approach her about because you are 26. And 
it is only February. You have a couple months left till April to move in with him. But, of course, you want some freedom. You are a grown woman. However, you want some independence. You want to be financially independent. Here's the thing, sweetheart. Your mom is still helping you with student loans. So the first things first that you need to do is you need to go get another job. It don't have to replace the job that you have now because that's a really good job. And eventually shit will start kicking in for you to where you'll be making good money and you'll be able to stand on your own. But until then, you need to get a second job. Something that maybe you can find to do at home on the internet. Um, or maybe something as a part-time job on the weekends or after you get off of work. But you're going to have to be able to pay your own student loans. Now, this is an argument that she can also win because she can tell you, well, I've been helping you pay your loans and I'm not going to help you anymore. You really can't expect her to help you pay your loans if you're not there. She's not the one that has the loan. She's not the one in debt for that, okay? But I really do think, like, if you want to be super duper grown up and accomplish all of these things on your own, then you need to go ahead and find yourself a second job, refinance your student loans, so that way you can handle them on your own. But here's the thing. Don't be afraid to talk to your parents. Of course, things don't go your way. They're not going to say what you want them to say. Shit, if that was the case, everybody would say what you wanted them, what they want to say. Everybody would say what you wanted to hear. You know what I'm saying? There are things that people say to me that I ain't even trying to hear. But that's just a part of life. There are things that I would like to say to my mom that she wouldn't agree on. But the good thing about it is I live all the way on the West Coast. She lives on the East Coast. I live in my own house. She lives in her own apartment. We're cool. She doesn't agree with everything that I do. But I'm a grown-ass woman. I'm 41 years old. However, I would never disrespect my mom. Just because I'm grown does not mean I can disrespect her. When I go to her home, you know what I mean, and I hang out with her or I visit with her, I don't do anything disrespectful in her home. Meaning, I don't drink in her home. I don't smoke weed in her home. I don't run in and out of her house, you know what I'm saying, because that is her home. And I respect the fact that even though I'm 41, this is my mother's house. And even if I'm a visitor, I have to respect her house because I wouldn't want you coming to my house doing no shit like that to me. So I'm not about to do the same thing to her. So... It's not going to go the way you plan it to go. It ain't going to be peaches and cream and rose petals or anything like that which you would like it to go. It ain't going to happen that way. But you got to suck it up and put your grown woman game down and let them know. You know, listen, have a great conversation with them and just inform them of what you and your boyfriend have been discussing. And let them know, mommy, daddy, I'm 26 years old now and I strongly believe and feel and know that it is time for me to venture out into the real world. And I totally understand the fact that you and daddy don't agree with living together in a situation unless we're married. However, this is what I want. And I would really appreciate it if you can just respect it. They don't have to totally agree with it, but at least respect it. That's my thing. Just, just respect it. Now, as I was saying... Back to the issue about your father's health. Now, it's great. You're supposed to take care of your parents when they're in need, when they're down, when they're not feeling well. We're supposed to look out for our parents because they looked out for us. Some kids feel like it's okay to disrespect their parents, talk to them any kind of way, um, treat them like they ain't shit. This is one thing that kids do a lot, and I've noticed that. But regardless of your age factor... It's all about respect, regardless of who you are and what you do. It is all about respect. That's number one rule. Now, when it comes to taking care of your parents, when they get in their age or they're elderly or they have an illness, you, out of, out of respect for your parents and out of concern and because you are the child, you or their child, you should help out. You should help take care of your father. And you need to inform your mother, regardless of where you live at locally, you are still going to be there to help her take care of your father and make sure that he's okay. 
you know set a plan aside with your mom like hey i can come over such and such days and help out and take a look in on him and make sure that everything is okay and if you need anything you can always call me you need to reassure her because you don't want to leave her in this burden however you don't want to live there for the rest of your life michelle you're 26 years old you're a grown woman. It's time for you to venture out and have your own life. Maybe even have some kids. Who's, who knows? You know what I'm saying? Who even knows? But as a grown woman, you really don't need to be in your parents' house. Now, it was good for you to get on your feet and so forth and do what you needed to do. You graduated. You got a good job. You, you, you know, it may not be the amount of money that you want or you're happy with in your job, but it's a job and you've gotten that job from your master's degree and succeeding at graduating and doing the things that you needed to do. So in the end and during the long run, it will work out and it will pay off. Sometimes it may not pay off when you want it to, but give it time and you will see that your job is paying off, that you're moving up in the chain and you're making more money and you're being able to financially take care of everything for yourself. Now, like I said, I would highly suggest getting a second job because you don't want to put your mother as the burden of paying for your student loan. And it's really kind of her to ask or to help out. And I probably would do the same for my kid because I would never want to see none of my kids um, in a predicament where they're not able to take care of themselves or provide for themselves or their loved ones, meaning their children or anything like that. And the same thing goes like I have two grandkids. My daughter, Tati, is here. And I watch him while she works. And, of course, I don't charge her because that's my grandson. And I don't call it babysitting. I call it us spending time together. We be hanging out. We be chilling. We take over Arizona. That's what I say. So I would never charge her because she just makes ends meet. She pays her rent out of her own pocket, her groceries, her bills. She takes care of her household. So my thing with taking Tinky, that's what I call him, Tinky, and keeping him with me while she works it's fine because it allows me to have time with my grandson. However, when she is in need, if she needs anything, she can always come to me and I'll let her know, listen, you need your cable bill paid, I'll pay it. You need such and such pay, let me help you out. This is what parents do. This is what we do. Okay, so as a parent, we're constantly in debt. We stay in debt because we got kids that need something, they got a bill. We don't want our kids to go without because we know as kids or as an adult what we used to go through as a child. I know as for myself what I went through as a teenager, as a very young adult because I had to do this on my own. I didn't have no one to help me. My mom didn't help me like that. She did, but she didn't. But that was still hardship on me but that's nobody's issues but my own because i was the one that decided to get pregnant so of course i had to battle that on my own but when you're grown and you're moving out of your parents home it is time to take full responsibility you cannot expect your mom to pay for your student loan or to help you so if she's to tell you that she's not going to you got to respect the fact just like you want her to respect the fact that you want to move on and move out and move in with some old dude then you got to respect the fact. And if she has not met him or if your father has not met him, why don't you plan a nice little dinner, maybe at a restaurant or something like that, and invite them and get to know him. And if they have met him, so what? Get to know him more. Bring him in. I'm not saying pop the question or pop with the statement of, oh, hey, me and him are going to move in together. I would highly suggest not doing that with your boyfriend around, okay? Because you don't want any embarrassing moments such as, oh, well, you're not married. Oh, what the hell? You don't want any type of situations like that. But just bring them together as a family unit. Let them get to know him more. If they haven't met him, let them get to meet him. If they have met him, let them get to know him more. However, after that, not directly after that. I'm not talking about as soon as he leave. I'm not talking about the next fucking day. Maybe a few days or a week or two later. Let them know what you and Rayshawn have been discussing. What you and him want to do together. What you and him have planned. Okay? Let her know this. It ain't going to go the way you want it to go, boo-boo. It ain't. However... At least you put your grown woman game down. Don't wait till the last fucking minute in April to tell them that you're moving out into your own shit. Don't do that. Be a grown ass woman and let them know. It's not going to go the way you plan it to go. Shit don't never go the way we want it to go a lot of times. However, we got to just take that big gasp of air and just fucking live it and be strong and do what we got to do. Bottom line. So on that note, 
let Michelle know what you would do. Would you tell your parents? How would you tell them? What do you feel about her situation? Give her your advice. Let her know in advance. Now, me personally, you guys have been together for a year and two months. I'm not saying that's too soon. I'm not saying it's right on time. I don't really know, okay? I don't really know old dude, so I can't really say if he's good karma, if he's bad karma. I just, I'm just going to say this to you. Make sure that he ain't no jackass, okay? Make sure that this motherfucker got his shit together and ain't no hidden agenda or hidden lines behind the curtains, okay? Make sure before you move out. Get all your ducks in a row before you fucking move out of the house. Make sure you do this beforehand. You don't want to tell your parents that, oh, Rayshawn was a jackass. You don't want to tell them that. Make sure that you know who he is before you get into any other bullshit, okay? And if the video kind of, like, cut out, it's because with this canon, you have to, like, after 30 minutes, you get to, re you have to press record again in the middle of a fucking conversation. Yes. I'm not really feeling that part, but. So, I think I got, like, 15 minutes left on this. So we're going to get to this one. Mm. Okay. Hey April, I have been a follower of yours for some time now and truly appreciate uh, to, truly appreciate all the raw uncut advice that you give. I'm a fellow New Yorker and respect you to the fullest to the DA. Fullest. Okay. New York in the house. <laughs> My situation is a bit bizarre, but fuck it. Here goes. My baby father and I have been on and off for nine years. We share a beautiful nine-year-old together. Over the years, we have been separated once due to his fucked up cheating ways and a domestic violence incident that took place before the separation. Before the separation, he has been nothing but a lying, cheating whore. Even slept with a co-worker of ours and a chick he claimed was his cousin but wasn't. He videotapes them, takes pictures of everything, and saves the motherfucking panties. A whole other story. He even had a private bedroom he kept blo kept locked. I broke in and found all the evidence. Because I felt bad seeing my daughter so hurt and sad, not being around her father, I decided to give it another try. Well, after about a month of moving back in, he was back to his lying, cheating ways. So this time, I did shit differently. I got a pretty decent job and started stacking bread. His family decided to sell the house we lived in out of the blue, which left me in search of an apartment, as I had no plans of moving forward with him. We shared this home with him with him, nosy fucking, with him and his nosy fucking mother and disabled sister. About three months before the closing, his mother gets hospitalized for breaking both legs. And later he's hospitalized for heart trouble, which left me to a juggle, a 4 to 12 a.m. job. Care for our daughter and his disabled sister. What? Oh, so, so she had to juggle 4 to 12 a.m. job, which is care for their daughter and his disabled sister. I searched high and low for an apartment, but was unable to be successful in finding one due to high rent and bad credit. New York City housing is a fucking joke and wasn't an option. Been on the waiting list for over three years. Unfortunately, wasn't able to find a crib before the closing and had to move with him and his family to Georgia. I had another plan. We ended up staying in a hotel room for about a month because they didn't plan shit right. I ended up using all of my savings to put down on a rental home for the five of us. I got my license, a whip, and two jobs. I recently found myself and, and daughter an apartment, but don't have a strong support system. I am tired of being used by him and his mother. The nigga don't work and is very, very controlling. I haven't fucked him in over a year and eight months. He, talk, he stalks me at work, leaves the crib late hours, which leaves our daughter with dysfunctional individuals and practices witchcraft and uses it against me. He practices witchcraft and uses it against me. I plan on letting him know that I will be moving out and don't give a fuck about what him and the rest of them do to survive. I worry about what will happen as a result as I don't have a support system for our daughter. What should I do to move forward? Oh, by the way, the nigga's on the run. Damn. So she didn't even give me her name, so we're going to call her Kelly. 
Did she say that she been with this dude, her baby father, on and off for nine years? They got a nine-year-old daughter, okay? And she, he's cheated on her, videotapes it, videotapes the girls and pit takes pictures and saves the girls' panties that he cheats on her with. Had a locked room for over some time now. He's basically a lying, cheating whore. He even slept with a co-worker of theirs. Um, he ain't got no job. He's on the run. His mother is a jackass, nosy bitch. His sister is disabled. The nigga fucking practices witchcraft. And she had to move to Georgia with him and his family. Bitch, are you crazy? Kelly, are you fucking crazy? Bitch, you didn't have to move nowhere with his fucking ass. I'd be damned if I'm about to move out of state with some fucking lame ass dude. Now, first of all, here's number one rule. Don't tell that motherfucker that you are going to move out. Bitch, what the fuck is wrong with you? Do not tell him that you are going to move out. Because that is when all hell is going to break loose. And it's going to be some shit that pops the fuck off. Either him and his mother are going to gang up on you. And include the disabled sister along with it. Do not tell that nigga you about to move out. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. No, no, no. Here's my thing. I would go and do what I need to do. Get me an apartment. Search for that shit while you at work. Go on your lunch break to find an apartment. And just get your shit and get the fuck out. Do not forewarn the nigga. Do not give him advance notice that your ass is moving the fuck out. The nigga practices witchcraft, so you say. Why the hell are you with this? He's on the run. He ain't got no job. He practices witchcraft. He is a lying, cheating whore. Who has the problem, Kelly? You or fucking him? Because it seems like your dumb ass is following behind him. You ain't fucked him in a year and eight months, so what are y'all doing together? Okay. So you ain't fuck him in a year and eight months, but y'all all live together. Do you really think that this dude, old dude, is sitting around waiting for your pussy when you ready to give it up? Because he don't give a fuck about your pussy. That nigga done got panties, bras, stockings, jeans, whatever the fuck else he's got from these bitches. He ain't studied about you, so here you are. You sitting your dumb ass, and no disrespect, sweetheart, but I'm just going to keep it real with you. You sitting your dumb ass. In this house with him. And you ain't fucked him in a year and eight months. You know he getting pussy on the side. He on the run. He ain't about shit. He's a lying, cheating whore. And the niggas practicing witchcraft. Okay. Some things we can work through and we can work past. Meaning, if a nigga cheat on your ass, some people can get over it and work through it. I have been one of those bitches. Okay? Trust and believe. I have been one of those bitches. Okay? I have to tell y'all that on another note about the movie theater situation where my son caught my ex-husband in the movie theater. If you guys want to see it, just write movie theater. If you want to know about it, just write movie theater and I will fucking tell you guys. But some things we can get through, meaning the cheating, the lies, um, you're lazy, okay, you don't put the toilet seat down, sometimes you slacking in the bed. We can get through that shit. But there's just one thing that I am not fucking getting through. And that is when you fucking with some shit that ain't fucking godly, okay? Demonic shit, witchcraft, and all of that voodoo, and all of that extra shit. Nigga, stay away from me. Stay far the fuck away from me with that bullshit. Now, it's nice to live in Georgia, Atlanta, wherever the fuck you live in. However, you don't need to leave with live with these crazy motherfuckers. You living with a bunch of crazy motherfuckers. You got a one, you got a mother that broke both her legs. What did his, what the, how the fuck did that even happen? Did her son fucking voodooize her and break her fucking legs? I'm just trying to figure this out. But, here's the thing. When... You found out that he was practicing witchcraft. Bitch, your cue was to run the fuck fast. You and your daughter run the fuck fast. Now, first of all, y'all been on and off for nine years. And y'all got a nine-year-old daughter. Which seems to tell me that you got pregnant real quick after fucking with this degenerate. Because he's a fucking degenerate. Now, you done spent your money taking care of these motherfuckers who don't appreciate shit. How long you going to... 
how long you gonna go through being used? Like seriously, like some people don't mind, especially if you rolling it, rolling in the dough. You got you got stacks and stacks. However, I could say if I got a few stacks in the bank or whatever, I don't give a fuck. You ain't about to use me. I'm not about to be around your voodoo witchcraft ass neither. What I'm trying to figure out is. Why the fuck is this motherfucker practicing witchcraft? Who is he trying to put spells on? Seems like he's got a spell on your ass, Kelly, which means stupidity. Because you're sitting around allowing this dumb shit. Now, here's the thing. You're feeling kind of foolish. I'm saying you are a little foolish right by now. Because you want to forewarn a nigga that you move him. That's a dumbass move. I wouldn't let that nigga know that I tied my shoelaces or just shit in the toilet. I wouldn't let him know none of my next moves. It's like chess, baby. You don't let them know your moves. You don't do shit like that. Okay? Second, you feel bad that your daughter is missing her father. Okay, let's 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 talk about this. Now let me tell you something. My daughters who are eight and thirteen. Well, my nine, my eight-year-old, she don't miss my ex-husband, her father. She does not miss him at all because she's seen enough of his bullshit, the dumb shit. So she don't miss him. She loves my fiancé. She loves him to death. But my 13-year-old, she's going through some things that she, I know she misses him. And she feels some type of way. However, I understand that they may have feelings for their father. But if you're a fuck-up, then you're a fuck-up. If you're a drunk, then you're a drunk. And I don't really give a fuck how sad my kids feel. I'm not about to allow them or put them in a situation with somebody who's a fuck up or practices some type of ill-mannered fucking bullshit like witchcraft. I don't think he's practicing it for the good reasons either. Hmm. Um, so, yeah, who's the parent? Your nine-year-old or you? It's time for you, Kelly, to grow the fuck up. Okay? And fuck them Fuck him. Fuck his mother and his sister. Fuck them. You are not their caregiver. You are not there to take care of them. What you're there to do is get on your own two feet. Bitch, you got jobs. You got yourself a car. You got yourself somewhere to live. Now what your next step is to get off the fucking high horse, bitch, and move the fuck on. Do not tell this motherfucker you're about to move out because you already said that all hell is going to break loose. Bitch, keep it calm. Get your apartment and get your shit. And if you need to get your shit out of there, then call the police and let them escort you to get your stuff. But don't fuck with that nigga no more. <sniffs> to me, he's a Satanist. I'm just saying. So I'm running out of time, but let Michelle know what you would do in this situation. Would you tell that nigga you about to move out or would you just move on your way? And would you fuck with a nigga that did witchcraft? I'm sorry. The whole family seems lame. Michelle, you need to get it together. I mean, Kelly, you need to get it together and do what you need to do for you and your daughter because it's called child neglect, okay? Don't keep your daughter in a situation like that where she might feel that dumbass men are okay and that is something that is okay and then she's going to follow in your footsteps and fuck with some dumb degenerate nigga. No, he's on the run, one. He ain't got no job, two. He practices witchcraft, three. He's a lying... He's a liar, four. He's a cheater, five. And he's a whore. And he he collects dirty panties and makes videotapes and pictures, six. Girl, I mean, seven. Girl, please. Bye, nigga, bye. Bye, Felicia. Bye. So let Mich uh, Kelly, Michelle, and Shay know what you would do in their situation. How would you react? What would be your, um, what would you do? What would be your outcome? And girls, like I told you, you only need one cup, okay? one and i'm feeling nice like right about nice right now so i'm gonna know i'm gonna go stay diva and divalicious make sure you rate comment subscribe and i will see you guys on my next video